and no shape is moving beneath the waves, it's silent, slow, and nearly invisible to sonar. Somewhere off the continental shelf, the AJX002 glides at 20 km per hour. Its hull is designed for stealth, and its range stretching 500 km from launch point to target zone. This is not a submarine in the traditional sense. It's an autonomous underwater vehicle engineered by China, and it's rewriting the rules of undersea competition. Pacific Ocean, once a domain where US attack submarines and sensor networks held near total awareness, now faces a new kind of uncertainty. So what makes the AJX002 different? First and most obviously is the operational profile it has. Unlike manned submarines, it can be deployed in swarms, launched from ships, shore or even civilian vessels. Its 500 km range means it can reach choke points like the Luzon Strait or the approaches to Guam without surfacing or refueling. Meanwhile, its speed of 20 km per hour may seem modest, but it's optimized for endurance and evasion. At these speeds, the AJX-002 can loiter near undersea cables, naval bases, or shipping lays for extended periods, waiting for a signal or a target of opportunity. But why does that matter on a geopolitical level? The US Navy's undersea dominance has relied on a combination of fast attack submarines, fixed sonar arrays, and mobile anti-submarine warfare patrols. Systems are calibrated to detect larger, noisier threats like submarines, diesel electrics, or surface ships. The AJX-002's low acoustic signature and small size make it difficult to track with existing sonar grids. Its autonomy means it can operate without direct communication, reducing the risk of detection by electronic surveillance. Put differently, the traditional kill chain which is detect, track, and engage is now disrupted completely. That's how that changes the calculus. If dozens or hundreds of these units can saturate a maritime region, they could easily overwhelm US defense corridors, complicating targeting and forcing American submarines to operate more cautiously. Now, the mere possibility of persistent, hard-to-find threats could slow carrier strike groups' movements or disrupt logistics convoys. So by any measure, this erodes the US's ability to guarantee sea control in critical areas, which a lot of countries rely on. The AJX's range puts key infrastructure like undersea cables, ports, and forward bases within reach. Health also complicates attribution, making it harder to respond decisively without risking miscalculation or escalation. But with that being said, the US Navy is not standing still. As over the next 12 to 24 months, expect accelerated investment in anti-submarine warfare technologies. So that's improved passive sonar, unmanned hunter-killer drones, and AI-enabled data fusion to sift through the noise and find these new threats. But now realistically speaking, how does the shift play out in real practice? U.S. planners may need to rethink patrol patterns, deploy more distributed sensors, and integrate commercial traffic monitoring to spot unusual underwater activity. The cost curve also changes because countering swarms of low-cost AJs may require new scalable defenses rather than a handful of high-end submarines. Now zooming out, the AJX-002 is just one piece of a broader trend, which is the democratization of undersea warfare. As autonomous platforms proliferate, the barriers to entry for undersea operations fall. And now states with modest budgets can field credible underwater threats, complicating the US Navy's global posture. This is not simply a moral judgment, it's an analysis of incentives and logistics. The AJX-002's emergence forces adaptation, not just in technology, but in doctrine, training, and alliance coordination. Because the underwater challenge is no longer a contest of steel and reactors alone. It's a race of sensors, algorithms, and autonomous machines, each side probing for advantage in the silent depth. So in the next two years, the balance of power beneath the waves may hinge on who adapts faster. For the US Navy, the era of unchallenged undersea dominance is ending and we're all seeing it happen. So the question now is not if, but how quickly the response will come. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe for more because I delve deep into a lot of news like this.